Hello, I'm Stuart Stout, the director with the Homeland Defense and Security Information Analysis Center. Today, we're going to talk about new research in the area of traumatic brain injury detection and why this topic is so important to the Department of Defense. Traumatic brain injury, or TBI, has been called one of the signature wounds of the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. Nearly 400,000 service members have been diagnosed with TBI since 2000. Blast injuries are a common cause of TBI, but more importantly, damage can still be done to the brain even if the injury doesn't lead to a concussion. These subconcussive head impacts can still cause significant issues. In 2012, Goldstein and colleagues published research results from a case series of post-mortem brains from U.S. military veterans exposed to blast and or concussive injury. The researchers found evidence that veterans who had been blast concussed later developed chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, a brain disease that has also been seen in National Football League players. TBI is not easily diagnosed, particularly on the battlefield. However, some new technologies and DOD-funded research aim to change the way these injuries are identified. A CT scan is usually the first test performed when a TBI is suspected, but these hospital-based machines are too large to bring them to the front lines. Recent research has focused on developing mobile alternative imaging technologies. Both the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps are developing and fielding new technologies for use on the battlefield to identify potential TBIs. Developed in 2015, the Marine Corps is now fielding the InfraScanner, which allows corpsmen in the field to quickly determine whether someone has suffered serious brain trauma and needs additional treatment. In fact, more than 200 devices have already been deployed to Marine Corps Battalion aid stations as part of their standard trauma kit. In 2017, the Army focused on developing the Lucid system in order to supply a portable, point-of-injury device for assessing combat-related TBI. The Lucid system, which uses transcranial Doppler ultrasound to detect bleeding in or around the brain, will be ruggedized and miniaturized to better suit military environments. Additionally, in early 2018, the U.S. Army Medical Material Agency identified Jan Medical's Brain Pulse device as a potential product that medics and physicians could use to rapidly and non-invasively diagnose mild brain injury in the field and pre-hospital settings. Brain Pulse is a small, portable, battery-powered headset containing sensors capable of detecting abnormalities in the normal oscillation of the brain. The results from the headset are analyzed by complex algorithms and then displayed on a touchscreen tablet, all in less than five minutes. After a user assessment conducted at Fort Bragg in March of 2018, the U.S. Army provided feedback to Jan Medical for future development and revisions. Army Research Laboratory is exploring new imaging methods to better understand the impacts of a TBI in the hours and days following an event. As Ashley Eidmore explains, imaging is an important aspect of diagnosing a TBI. Hello. My name is Ashley Eidsmore, and I am an electrical engineer and brain injury researcher at the Army Research Laboratory. I am here to talk about the brain, as well as the work my team and I are doing at ARL to better understand the mechanisms under which subconcussive injuries accumulate and impose lasting physiological effects. As the single most important organ in making you who you are, the brain is a complex but vital system to understand. While large-scale concussive impacts can have readily apparent physical and mental effects, such as white matter damage and dementia, the more insidious threat lies in the subconcussive impact. These injuries are commonly seen in athletic and military settings, and while each individual impact may leave little evidence, the accumulation of them over time can leave lasting and permanent effects. In order to develop a deeper understanding of how these subconcussive injuries accumulate, we partnered with Argonne National Labs and Dr. Joseph Orgel from the Illinois Institute of Technology to examine nanoscopic structural changes to myelinated cells in the brain in response to injury. Understanding the initial responses of these cells is potentially relevant to how myelinopathy develops and thus how behavioral symptoms of TBI are expressed. Using X-ray diffraction, we were able to monitor changes to these cells with a very high resolution and found repeatable disruptions occur at low pressures in the myelin structure, something that is capable of influencing proteins responsible for myelin maintenance and making the cell more prone to damage in the future. We hope to continue this research with full cortical slices and examine further how initial disruptions compare to regionalizations of persistent myelinopathy.
By understanding the lowest levels of how the damage accumulates, we could develop better models of myelinopathy or methods of treatment and protection against. In addition to our work with Argonne, we are working closely with our partners at other DOD facilities to develop and field clinically integrated technologies for the longitudinal tracking of head exposures. In recent years, wearable wireless sensors have been deployed which track accelerations experienced on warfighters and athletes caused by impact or blast exposures. However, the data generated through these systems lack specific information about how these impacts affect the brain. ARL is collaborating with Digital Brain Technologies, a startup based out of Penn State, to provide a cloud-based computer model of the brain, which utilizes the aforementioned biomechanical sensor data to create visual representation of an impact's intracranial effects. Primary work is focused on planning and integrating a digital brain application programming interface with existing sensor platforms. In addition, a separate web application will be developed that collects, merges, and using artificial intelligence analyzes data to create robust brain health predictions. This effort would be directly applicable to the military environment and aims to be able to provide near real-time monitoring capabilities for a number of situations, including blast exposures during heavy weapons training, head accelerations experienced by pilots, and various impacts in the field. Brain scans are not the only available TBI detection tool. Let's take a look at some new research using biological markers in the blood to detect potential head injuries. The Food and Drug Administration, United States Army, Air Force Research Laboratory, and Sandia National Lab, to name a few, have partnered with the NCAA academia, and industry to advance the state of the art related to blood biomarkers for TBI detection. Some of this research focused on the detection of suspect proteins in the blood, metabolomics, and interstitial fluid through the use of microneedles attached to wearable devices. In addition to imaging and blood biomarkers, research into eye tracking may also give us another TBI detection tool. A number of devices are currently being used to measure eye movement deficits which can be found in as many as 85% of concussed patients. A close relationship exists between eye movement and dysfunction in the brain. Generation of eye movement involves several neural pathways, including the cerebrum, brainstem, and cerebellum, so damage to any of these areas of the brain would affect certain types of eye movements. Ongoing research supported by Army Medical Research and Material Command is validating methods to combine electroencephalography, or EEG, and eye tracking for the assessment of TBI. The fusion study has shown that individuals with TBI demonstrate signs of cognitive strain at levels of high cognitive load, and measuring eye tracking following concussion is an accurate method for identifying head injury. In the final phase of this study, researchers plan to further evaluate this within an active duty TBI clinic setting. Thanks for joining us today. To find out more about TBI detection methods, please visit the HDIAC website and don't forget to follow us on social media.